we're in our 2001 Avalon. And we've come up with a check engine light and the VSC light comes on as well, but that's just common when the check engine light comes on, it turns off the vehicle skid control. So we're gonna diagnose this and figure out what's wrong. So put a code reader in and we're getting a P1155. And at other times while driving, I was also getting a P1130. That's telling me that the oxygen sensor or the air fuel mixture sensor might be bad. I think the 1155 means it, it says right on there it's a heater circuit malfunction. So we're going to look at how you can diagnose that. So that 1155 code refers to the bank two upstream sensor, which is luckily this sensor right up in the front of the engine. The way it was described to me is with a transverse mounted engine, you have the pulleys on the front of the engine, bank one is on the left, bank two is on the right. So that sensor is connected down under here. We're gonna pull this plug out and see if we can read continuity on that heater circuit. So there's a little tab on the plug that you have to push in and then you can get the end of the plug out. And you can see on the wires, there's two black wires on this and then there's a blue and a white the two black, since those are the same color, that's supposed to be the heater circuit. Test my leads there, so I, my, my leads are connected. When I probe those two pins, I'm seeing an open circuit. Uh, there's no resistance across that. So that tells me that heater circuit is bad. And let's prove it by looking at a new one. So we got a new air fuel sensor, some people call it an oxygen sensor. We got a Denso 2349021. Hopefully that's the right one. And we're going to probe this one. It's got the same wire colors on it. Those two black wires. We'll see what we get. And look at that. 1.4 ohms across those two. So I, I would say that's a good confirmation that the heater circuit or the, the heater element in the one in the car has gone bad. So we'll take our 7 8 wrench and see if we can loosen this up. They do sell a special socket for these to go around the wire, but if you can get a wrench on it, then you don't really need that socket. And that's still a little hot. That's the old one. That's our new one. Cord is slightly longer but otherwise the pin out looks the same. A little plastic keeper on here because there's a little crush washer, so we'll get rid of that.
feed that wire back underneath. Get that plugged in so it clicks. Now we're going to start it up and clear the code and see if it holds. All right, let's see what happens. So we still have the check engine light. We'll read our codes. Same code as before, uh, I think because it was stored. And let's try to clear them. Okay, I cleared the check engine light. The VSC is still off. I don't know if it takes any drive cycles to uh, do that. We'll give it a little ride around and see if that clears it. Now you can also see another warning light on there, which is for my brake lights, and that's only because I replaced one of my bulbs with an LED. It doesn't draw enough current to tell the sensor that it's uh, there. So it, it thinks the bulb is out, and that's common with LEDs if they don't have enough resistance in them. They don't draw enough current. Some cars sense that and think that the bulb is actually out. We're not seeing anything happening with driving, and I don't know if it takes a while, but I wonder if I just have to turn the car off and back on. Let's see if that does it. Yeah, look at that. It's gone. So, I'd say that was an easy fix. Luckily, it was that sensor in front. If it was the one in the back, that's a lot harder to get to. Probably have to get underneath and get it in a cramped spot, and that might be where you need that special socket to get in there. Well, I guess we're calling this one a success.